All right, everybody, here we go. This video is going to talk about the circle and some of its basic parts and then some lines that intersect circles. So some of the basic parts of a circle is uh, we have a radius. A radius is a segment that's from the center of the circle to some point on the circle. A chord is a segment that has both endpoints on the circle. A diameter is a special kind of chord. Both endpoints are on the circle, but it must pass through the center. See, a chord does not have to pass through the center. A secant is a line that passes through the circle and touches it twice, going all the way through it and continuing outside. A tangent is a line that touches the circle just once. Okay? Now, this is just a little area for you to practice, so why don't you pause the video for a minute and just try to name the center, the radii, some chords, diameter, secants, and tangents. Go right ahead and pause it and try it on your own. Now, the center you would have gotten would have been X. There are three different radii, so we have, remember, a line that comes from the center and then goes to a point on the circle. So we're going to have one that's XA. You should have an XB and an XC. Those are the three different radii that come from the center of the circle and touch a point on the circle. Chords. Remember, chords is just a segment that has two points on the circle. So that would be AB. Another one would be segment AC and segment ED. Your diameter, there's only one, it's just AC. It is a chord that passes through the center. Line ED would be your secant because it's a line that passes through it. Notice how I also wrote ED for a chord, but I said segment. I did not put the line symbol above it. And tangent would be BF, because it's a line that just barely nicks the circle at a point once. So those are your parts. So you need to be familiar with them, because you will be asked you know, different things about chords and segments and stuff like that. Tangents of circles. Um, if you have two different tangents that come from the same exterior point, they're going to have the exact same length. So for this example here, this tangent and this tangent are going to be congruent because they come from the same point on the outside. So whenever you're solving for x, all you have to do is set those two equal to each other. So 2x minus 10 is equal to x plus 4, and then you just solve for x. x is equal to 14, and you're done. So again, there's two more problems with it. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and when you are ready, click play and see if you got them correct. If you got 2 for the second example, you would be correct. Uh, it can't have a length of 0, so all you had to do is set both equal to each other. As soon as you saw that you had an x squared and an x, you should get everything to the left and set it equal to 0. Factor out your GCF of 2x. 2x equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0, so x is equal to 0 and 2, but you can't have a length of 0. That's like saying, oh, this tangent is 0 length, or I walked 0 miles today. It's like you didn't go anywhere, you didn't do anything, so 0 cannot work for the length of a tangent. Um, and then the second one, same thing, just set x squared plus 8 equal to 6x. Bring your 6x over to the left factor, you get 2 and 4, both of them work, so you're good to go. Um, so that's it for tangents from the same exterior point. We do have a few more problems to talk about, and then this is a radius and a tangent. Um, a radius and a tangent that intersect at the same spot will always be perpendicular. Okay, so anytime you have a tangent, if you draw a radius to that tangent point, it will be perpendicular. That means you can expect a whole bunch of Pythagorean theorem here. Now, these are going to be tricky depending on where, what information is given. So for the first example, don't be fooled. This length for the hypotenuse is not 2. The inside radius is 3. And one thing we know about a circle is that all radii are going to be the same length. So if this is 3, this is also 3, which makes this entire hypotenuse 5. Now, it is totally unnecessary, but if, you, if it's helpful to you, you can redraw this whole piece on the outside 
if it helps you to see the right triangle better. Okay, now it's just, like I said, the Pythagorean theorem. You're just going to do 3 squared plus x squared is equal to 5 squared. So x squared is equal to 16 after you subtract 20 or 9 from 25. And then you end up with x is equal to plus or minus 4. But of course, we only have 4 because we can't have a negative length. And that's it. It's just the good old-fashioned Pythagorean theorem, something that you did a whole bunch of times prior to this chapter. So the next example. Again, we know the inside is a radius, and all radii are the same. So we know that that's going to be 5. So there are two different ways you can do this problem. One way that you can do this problem is by calling this entire length x plus 5, because we know the inside is 5. So if you were to set that up, you would have 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to the quantity of x plus 5 squared. Now I will tell you right now, that's going to be more of an algebraic challenge than the other way. Um, but I'll just show you anyway. 5 squared plus 12 squared we know is 169 is equal to x plus 5 squared does not mean x squared plus 25. It means you have to FOIL x plus 5 with itself giving you x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then you would have to bring everything over to one side and solve it that way after factoring. Now I'm going to show you the slick way to do this because sometimes that method is unavoidable. But in this one we can be slick. We know that the inside, the radius part, is going to be 5. But we could just call this c. So if we did that we would have 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared, which means 169 is equal to c squared, which means we know c is equal to 13. So we know that this entire length is 13. So if the entire length is 13 and the inside is 5, we know that x is 8. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a clever way of doing that problem without having to worry about factoring. All right, so why don't you try the next problem on your own? Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Now this one, you found out that this is going to be x, and there is no slick way to do this. So this one, you have to use the long way of doing it. So we have x squared plus 15 squared is equal to the quantity of x plus 9 squared. And when you do that, you're going to have x squared plus 225 is equal to x squared plus 18x plus 81. But the nice thing that happens with this is you have an x squared on both sides, so as soon as you subtract x squared from both sides, they cancel. So you're still not going to have to factor. So you have 225 is equal to 18x plus 81. Subtract 81 from both sides and divide by 18, and you're going to end up with x is equal to 8. Okay, so, but again, you did have to make sure you foiled x plus 9 since there was no shortcut way of working with this problem. You can't call this c and that x. You can't work with two different variables in one problem. Okay, so uh, last two problems here. The first one, it's really not a difficult problem. We're finding the whole thing x. We know that the inside is 6. We know that this is 4. So the only trick to this problem is you just have to draw your own radius to that point of tangency. So right there, there's your circle. We know that the radius is 6. We know that this part is what we're looking for, and the outside, the whole hypotenuse, is 10. So we're just going to do 6 squared plus x squared is equal to 10 squared. So x squared is going to be equal to 64, which means x is equal to 8. Now, x right here is 8, which means in the problem, this is 8, and that's 8. So you just get 16. The last one... Quadrilaterals. We know that quadrilaterals will always add up to 360 degrees. So, we know that these guys are 90 degrees. If you forgot that quadrilaterals add up to 360 degrees, you can, if you want, just draw a line over here and say that this is now 25 and 25. And either way you do it, now you're working with a triangle. And if you're working with a triangle, we know that triangles always add up to 180 degrees. So no matter which way you look at it, you're going to say that if this is 25 and that's 90 degrees, we know that this is 65 and this is 65. So 
we would just subtract from 180, 90, and 25, and we'd get 65. That would be the top and bottom. This is 130 degrees when you add the two together. The other way was if a quadrilateral is always 360, we would subtract the two 90 degree angles that we have and the 50 degree angle, and we're still going to end up with 130 degrees. So that's it for this first video on circles. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.